Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 7 and compare it against the iPhone 7 Plus and see which specific iPhone you should go ahead and buy in 2023. Now, I really honestly don't think you should probably be buying either one of these iPhones, if I'm being honest, but it's still interesting to see how these two iPhones compare, even though they're kind of side by side next to each other. I mean, these iPhones came out at the exact same time, so it's always interesting to see how the, both of them kind of compare in that sense. But if you want to pick up some iPhones, I would recommend buying this year. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, side by side, you can definitely tell that both these iPhones are a little bit different. The iPhone 7 that came out in 2016, you know, very similar to the iPhone 7 Plus, had a 4.7 inch display on the front. It looked pretty good. I think it was a very, very good iPhone for the most part in terms of the design. It looked pretty much the same as the other one, which is why I'm kind of saying that kind of tongue in cheek. You had the top of bezel, you had the bottom bezel, you had the home button on the front with Touch ID 2. And this was not really the last iPhone with a least amount of bezel, but this was the last iPhone with, I guess, for that year to not have, like, to basically have the bezel on it for the main flagship, if that makes sense. Because after this, we got the iPhone 10, and this one pretty much became completely obsolete, or at least it looked really ugly. Now, with the iPhone 7 Plus, this is a much bigger phone, so you are getting a 5.5-inch Retina IPS panel on this device. Now, you will probably agree with me when I say that back in 2016, this iPhone looked the same as the 6S Plus and 6 Plus, but there were some noticeable changes. For one, they did kind of make the home button more flush into the design. Same thing with the iPhone 7. It's an actual vibration motor rather than an actual button, which is pretty insane. So it vibrates the bottom half of the display or whatever. It still looks good. There's not really a lot to complain about here, but I will definitely tell you phones like the iPhone, you know, like the Samsungs of that year may have looked a little bit better than these ones, but still, these ones look really, really good for how old they are. Now, in terms of thinness and thickness, you can kind of see that between both phones, very interesting because they're almost like the same thinness and thickness, which is crazy because the iPhone 7 Plus is a much bigger phone. doesn't really seem to be focusing. There we go. So with the iPhone 7, you can see that we both have, you know, volume buttons. We have the mute switches here. The iPhone 7 is a much smaller phone. You can kind of see, at least from the angle that I'm showing you. On the bottom, we have our lightning ports. Mine's still charging because I need to charge over this B-Test. Actually, I might just switch it up between these two. Speaker grills at the bottom. And we also had cameras on the back. Now, this was a pretty big change here. Before, we were pretty much getting almost the same cameras on both models. So if you were having a small iPhone or a big iPhone, you were getting pretty much the same camera. But with these iPhones, that completely changed. The iPhone 7 Plus had a better camera and it was an extra sensor on the back of the iPhone 7 Plus over the iPhone 7. This was a smart move because not only was now size becoming a little bit of a bigger thing on the iPhones that are worth the Plus models, but also if you were spending more money, you were actually getting some pretty big features, bigger battery and also a better camera. Those were some things that, you know, kind of kind of created the framework and the groundwork for how Apple kind of creates their phones nowadays where they kind of save all the cool features for their you know pro models and kind of gives us a watered down iPhone I think it kind of started here for the most part now these were also the first iPhones to remove the headphone jack as well so that honestly was a pretty insane thing but overall looking at both these iPhones pretty insane I think Apple has moved a lot since then but these were both were pretty decent iPhones and the 7 plus was probably one of my most favorite iPhones of all time now, I think the iPhone 7 is also a, you know, between these two phones, the biggest issue I would say for the most part is probably it's, I would, I'm just going to be honest, it's the software updates, you know, both of these iPhones are no longer worth buying anymore because of the lack of software. There is no reason to buy any of these iPhones anymore because they're just not getting any more software updates. So I can say that time and time again, but I will tell you for the most part, if you are somebody who is going to be buying one of these devices, just don't. It's not worth it. You're going to be getting a much better experience if you buy a phone that's supported, even like an iPhone 8. An iPhone 8 is going to be giving you probably a better experience overall than an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. So those are some things to keep in mind. But regardless, that's kind of how I feel about those two devices right there. Now it's going to do a speed comparison between them. The iPhone 7 has that Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with 2GB of RAM, but the iPhone 7 Plus has the Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with 3GB of RAM, the first iPhone to bring 3GB of RAM as well. So let's go see which one's the fast one between both of these. Okay, there we go. Both of these devices are, as you can see, we are, I don't know why this iPhone's home button is being weird, but there we go. Both these iPhones are pretty much cleared out. Let's get into it. Phone calls, 3, 2, 1. Okay, about the same thing, not that big of a difference here. It's going to try getting out of it again. Music, three, two, one.
and you can see i don't know what's going on with the iphone 7 plus so we'll just go and hop out of this one as well this one has a faulty home button so it's always a little weird getting out of it let's go and try the app stores 3 2, one okay this one is not having network this one is having network issues this one is not so just going to let this one kind of go out let's go and try camera three two one okay let's close out of this one and let me just go and take a photo three two one Seven plus seemed to be a little bit faster, although the iPhone seven, as you can see, I guess it took the flash, so that's probably why it took so long. Hopping out of this one, let's try photos three, two, one. Okay, perfect. Let's go and hop out of this one. Let's go ahead and try something like mail three, two, one. Okay, let's go and hop out of this one again. Let's go and try another one. Let's try, da, da, da. let's try like stocks three, two, one. And two different panels again. Man, this comparison is not doing that well. <laughs> Let's go and try some of these other applications. Let's go and try Genshin Impact. Three, two, one. That is a massive game. This could take like 30 minutes on both of them. But I will probably say that between both, they're going to be more similar than not. I think right now the 7 Plus is doing better for some reason. I have no idea why. But I think the iPhone 7, like I said, is still holding its own. It's not like the biggest deal in the world. Okay, so for a second, I thought the iPhone 7 was going to beat it, but it looks like I guess there was a network outage issue going on with the iPhone 7. Understandable. Maybe it's not connected to the Wi-Fi. I'm not too sure. We can try another application. We can try Temple Run 2. 3, 2. And you can see, I think the 7 Plus again got into the loading panel a little bit faster than the iPhone 7. There's a chance that the Wi-Fi issue... Okay, I guess not. And of course, we get into another Wi Fi issue, but it seemed like it was about to be faster on the iPhone 7 right there. Let's go and hop out of this one Snapchat 321. iPhone 7 Plus is faster, iPhone 7 a little bit slower. Let's go and try one more. Let's try Stack, which I do not have. We can try, I think that kind of covers it to be honest. I think we kind of get the idea. The iPhone 7 Plus, I think, is probably the faster one, which it has more RAM, so it kind of has more room to kind of, you know, jump around there. But I think the iPhone 7 is still doing a decent job when it kind of comes down to it. Now, in terms of the cameras on the back, like I mentioned before, you're getting a, you know, you're getting a different camera setup. You're getting 12 megapixel sensors, 4K on the back, which is great. You are getting that telephoto lens on the iPhone 7 Plus, which is really nice. The iPhone 7, on the other hand, you know, still a good camera. You have like the resolution you can film at the front as well. Now, with the iPhone 7, I think when it kind of comes down to it, it's not a bad camera. You know, I think it was a good camera when it first came out. You still have the capability of like zooming in a lot. You still have the capability of zooming out. You have video mode, slow mode, time lapse. You have square mode and panorama mode. So that kind of stuff is really cool. And I will say that with this type of sensor, it means a lot. I mean, it's it's a it was a decent sensor when it first came out. It may not be perfect anymore, but I think it was good enough. And I do think Apple did a decent job with the sensor at that time. Now with the iPhone 7 Plus, I think Apple's done a decent job. I think this was a big upgrade coming from the 6S Plus because clearly it had that extra sensor. It was a perfect, no, that's kind of how it is. You know, it's a t telephoto lens, which is still really nice. 10x zoom, which is still pretty decent. You're getting 1x zoom on the outside. You're getting video mode, portrait mode, square mode. You're getting a lot of stuff built in within this camera as well. But looking back, I will say something like the iPhone 7 Plus, great camera, looks amazing. But I don't know, like these type of cameras kind of get, didn't age too well. There's still lots of graininess going on. But to kind of sum up this video, what I'll definitely tell you is, I think the iPhone 7 Plus, it's a good phone, and it's a it's a good phone overall. It's not perfect, but I think Apple's done a really good job with this type of device, and that kind of stuff is super important. When you're getting a phone like this, it's a good device, which is something I like. With the iPhone 7, I think this is a good phone too, but both of these phones are just not worth buying anymore. They're both way too similar, even though the 7 Plus is more powerful with a better camera. The iPhone 7 is... I mean, it's the same thing as a 7 Plus, so neither of these phones are worth buying. You're much better off buying something like an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 11 or something like that. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video.